So hi, Ashley, welcome to the AK Experience podcast. Um, so could you go, go ahead and give us a one minute intro of yourself for the viewers? Yeah, totally. Um, so let's see, I currently live in Brookline, which is right in the Boston area. Um, I work as a freelance writer um, and I'm currently um, kind of in the middle of a very sharp career transition from software engineering to writing, um, but I really enjoy writing. I write about wildlife, about science, um, and also do a lot of creative writing and it's what I'm hoping to pursue more long-term. Um, I'm not keeping an eye on the time, but that's a really short summary. Um, yeah, I also do a lot of wildlife photography um, and that influences my writing a lot. And I care a lot about writing inclusive science communication that really invites people in to experience nature, interact with wildlife, things like that. Okay, all right, it's, uh, it's very interesting. So when I was going through your profile, um, I noticed that you started off um, with a software background and then transitioned into more uh, writing freelancing stuff. So I'm actually uh, from a similar background. I did CS at UT and I noticed you did it at Rice. Uh, <laughs> yep. We know we, we got that uh, rivalry going on for football and everything. But uh, so what, what was that about? How did you kind of make that shift? Uh, what kind of inspired you? Were you always, always interested in this and you had like a switch or just wanted to know more about that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I, yeah, so I did, I did a CS degree at Rice. I worked full time as a software engineer for about two years. Um, and I really thought that that was going to be like my long term career journey. But um, I don't know, I, I think I realized about a year into working full time as an engineer that it just wasn't really the right environment for me, um, just like a high tech corporate environment definitely works for some, like for some people and I know a lot of my friends really thrive in that environment um but um I think especially during COVID I got to know myself better and it really came through that it wasn't the right place for me um and yeah I I took some time off of work um I was going through a lot of health issues at the same time so I was on leave from work um and I just I had free time and I was like I really like nature I really like bird watching I spend a lot of time out in nature like doing wildlife photography um and then i would come home and i would um just like tell each of my friends the same story about what i had done that day and like what birds i had seen what animals i had seen um so i decided to start writing about it instead so that i could um <laughs> consolidate all the information into one place and just broadcast it out to them um yeah, so that, that's what got me started with writing. I didn't think um, when I started doing that, it, that it was going to be like something I would pursue as a career. I just really yeah. enjoyed doing it. Um, I started with like an email newsletter to like 20, 30 of my friends um, with like okay. field mm -hmm. trip notes and guides to the different species that I saw. Um, but people really liked it. Um, I thought, you know, they didn't find it as annoying as I thought that they might. Um, so it's it's kind of grown from there. And it uh, made me pursue like other forms of creative writing and then more recently more like scientific writing and news writing as well yeah oh wow that's very interesting so where would you see these birds would these be in like the Brooklyn area or like you'd be traveling and then finding birds yeah so I think how it started was um back um I'm from Austin so back yeah. at the beginning of the pandemic I was living in Austin again and I was going for my classic like pandemic sanity walks yeah. um, and just started noticing the birds like singing in the neighborhood around me. Um, I started using, um, there's an app called Merlin um, that you can use to identify different bird songs. So I started using that and learning more about what the actual species were. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And then I, I, from doing that, and then after I moved to Boston, I realized even like in a really dense urban area, there are birds everywhere if you just pay attention, if you like pause and pay attention. Like, and there's more than pigeons and sparrows and stuff. There's actually a lot of wildlife going on like all around you. Yes. So ever since then, like I do spend a lot of time out in parks and in wildlife sanctuaries, but also like sometimes if I want to bird watch and I don't want to travel, I can just walk down the street and see yeah. a, lot, a lot of action. Okay, okay, nice. So initially, I was going to kind of uh, hit on the more uh, writing side and like the your career aspect, but I'm liking this more. So I'm going to ask <laughs> some questions in this. Uh, yeah, sure. 
So let's say like an amateur person who just like the average person who doesn't know anything more than like mitochondria is like a powerhouse of a cell, like that kind of knowledge about science and birds and stuff. Um, how can they get started in bird watching? And what exactly would they know? Could you give us like a good guide for how someone like me, somebody in the viewers who's just like, I don't know anything about birds, but what she said sounds cool, but I want to get started in that. So how could they do? Yeah, that's great. I'm always waiting for people to ask me this. Um, I guess I would I would start kind of how I started myself, like just going for a walk in whatever neighborhood you live in, um, yeah. even if it's in the middle of the city um, and like not having like headphones in, kind of put your phone away um, and walk slowly down like a few blocks um, yeah. and just see like if your ears can discern like through whatever city noise and traffic, like if you can hear the birds first, I think mm -hmm. that's a good, that's at least how I started was just listening. Um, it can be harder to visually spot them sometimes, um, but just listening and it's kind of like a nice mindfulness practice as well. Um, yeah. But yeah, I would start that way and like see if there's like if you hear multiple if you hear the same sound coming from multiple places it's probably the same species of bird mm -hmm. um, the same song and then once you've done that a few times um I would actually just get um, one of those apps so I, I always recommend Merlin um, Merlin Bird ID it's it's created by the Cornell Lab of Ornithology which is um super oh. cool but how do you um, spell that Merlin Merlin, M-E-R-L-I-N. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So there, there are quite a few different um, bird and even just like more broad wildlife identification apps, but I really recommend yeah. that one because there's a lot of different ways that you can identify birds with them and just kind of like turn it on, like recording when you're walking um, and see what it finds. Wow, that's really cool. Yeah, that's I think it's an easy way to get into it. It's kind of like a gateway. I don't know. It's once you have that and you start actually recognizing like what species are around you i think it's it yeah. just kind of builds from there yeah that makes sense because um so last week i actually went on a trip to costa rica with my family mm -hmm. and literally every single place we go to every single restaurant they have a open air kind of back patio area and then yeah. it opens into like the rainforest Mm -hmm. and then they have these little um like feeding plate areas so they just bring some fruits and like leave them there and then yeah. so many different birds just like flock together start eating those fruit and then the funny part is me and my sister we didn't know a single bird um like variety we didn't know the names of these birds we're like yo yeah. this looks like that bird from rio it's like oh remember that fat bird <laughs> oh it's that guy right there <laughs> and we're just like rio was our only um what do you call it measure of oh what bird it is and stuff so i feel like that's a good movie too good throwback it is that's it's a very formative movie <laughs> true very true yeah fish. no that's great though nemo yeah. for fish and rio for birds is basically that's all you need it's the that's all you need. exactly field. yeah i yeah i um i changed my answer to just watch rio just watch rio that's true uh which one the first one or the second one first one's better i think the first one's better too yeah <laughs> and what's the second one just, just what's the first one yeah, i can't i can barely even remember the second one <laughs> yeah second one's like the you know the white bird i think he like becomes evil or he's been evil but like he comes back and then he tries to do some more evil stuff but yeah mm. so that is good yeah so watch rio uh and then if you want to get into bird watching um download merlin so mm -hmm. two tips okay yeah okay. And also maybe a third i would recommend like I know there's like the National Audubon Society. We have Mass Audubon up in Massachusetts. There's also a Texas Audubon Society. Mm -hmm. um, organizations like that host free bird walks pretty frequently um, oh, just okay. like around your town. Um, and those are tend to be like pretty accessible to people who are new to bird watching. They'll have a guide yeah. every time. So if you don't want to do it completely on your own either, that's a great way to do it and also meet new people too. Oh, that's really cool. I've been, honestly, my roommate and I were literally talking about the same thing. We're like, there's not enough ways for people to meet new people in like mm -hmm. today's generation. We're just like, we wish we just had like a city center like they do in Europe where people just kind of just hang yeah. out and chill and do stuff because 
it's tough out here. Meetups are not the best place, I'll just say, because it's not, it's really not. Yeah, like sometimes you might go and there's like two other people and you're like, so <laughs> that's what's up. So we need we need some alternatives. We gotta find some yeah. maybe yeah. we gotta make this a thing. We gotta make this like a popular option that everybody just 200 people go like bird watching. Uh-huh. That's yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm for it. It is growing in popularity. I think that bird watching really like soared in popularity, like yeah. with COVID. Um, and it's it's kind of sustaining actually. Um, and I've been noticing, at least on bird walks and out when I'm just you know wandering through the woods, like more and more young people bird watching, which is really cool. Because typically, okay. I, when I first started, it was more like maybe like a retired person's activity. Um, so yeah. it's really great to see so many, even like children out there doing it. It's really great. This podcast will be <laughs> the only it's thing true. is if we have 200 people watching the birds, the birds might not watch us. Yeah, it might be too many in one group, but yeah, yeah, yeah. we gotta that. break it down. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So um now I wanna ask you a little bit more about writing. Mm -hmm. Uh, because that's one of the topics that I'm really kind of have been interested in a lot lately because um I wanna improve my um clarity in thinking and the way you're able to deliver um that message properly and one of my favorite um creators his name is dan co he basically talks about how your brain has a whole vivid like picture within itself like some a lot of thoughts going on in your brain and imagine if you only had like two crayons to paint that on a paper <laughs> you're not gonna be able to create that vivid of a imagery yeah. However, if you had a whole toolbox, like 200 colors, then you're able to create a whole uh, beautiful scenery. So mm -hmm. essentially, I believe that writing gives people that tool to articulate better and put whatever's in here outside and make other people understand it. So in that way, writing is really important. So I wanted to ask you how you kind of got started in writing. Um, I know you said you transitioned from software, but like, was there kind of a time earlier before college when you were big into writing or like after, how did you get into writing? And what is it kind of that you do with writing now? Um, if you could talk a little bit about your blog and stuff. Sure, okay, yeah. yeah. Um, so let me think, for, for getting started, um, yeah, I did start with um, just kind of like a little newsletter about birds, I also took um, a free writing workshop um, pretty close to where I live through the public library system. So it was a creative writing workshop. Um, and that I actually got um, some of my pieces published through that workshop. And I think that gave me a lot of motivation to keep writing. Um, and all of, so all of last year, I was taking like workshop after workshop in different genres, different types of writing. Um, so I think having like, I think it's really important to have a community of other writers and kind of be in a space sometimes where everyone else is writing um, because it's easy um, with, 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 with writer's block or even just like self-criticism to kind of block yourself when you're trying to write and when you're trying to express yourself through writing. So it helps when everyone around you is also kind of banging their head against the wall. Um, so I think that structure and um, the structure of having like assignments every week or having something that I knew I needed to produce really helped. Um, and just writing regularly, like writing every single day, regardless of, of how how good it was, because um, it's really just like a muscle. Um, and what I do now, I do, um, I have my blog, so it's called Confessions of a Bird Freak. Um, I'm pretty sure I, that was like an auto-generated name, and I was really pleased that no one had ever used it before. Um, but it's, it's expanded a little bit because I started off with doing mostly humor writing. Um, I thought that was the best way to bring in audiences who didn't know very much about what wildlife, who didn't maybe didn't even have access to as much green space as I did growing up. Um, yeah. Just kind of like in a more inviting way. And I also think like my, um, I don't know, my ulterior motive is always to like get people to care more about wildlife for the purpose of, of advancing conservation. But I think um, you know, if you make people laugh, they're more likely to trust you and more likely to want to listen to you. And it's, it's, I think it's more inviting. So that's how I started. 
um, with just kind of funny little pieces and like I would squeeze in actual like scientific information about birds in there. Um, but it's expanded now. I include some of my own like poetry about nature. I include more technical essays about like climate change. Um, so the range is a little bit wider. Um, and it's even not always just about birds. Um, yeah. yeah, so I do that. And then I also write kind of like in a very different area. I write freelance um, like news articles for a local news website um, in my town. So it's pretty different. It's a very different kind of writing. News writing is very different from creative writing, but they, I definitely find that like my practice in both, they inform each other. Um, mm -hmm. Writing is writing. It's still practicing, you know, doing what you were saying, like taking all of whatever beautiful mess is in here, and, like putting it into words for other people to read. Yeah. Um, but yeah, for that, I um, mostly so far have been um, covering like our local nonprofits in Brookline. So like interviewing them when they have events, talking to them about what they want the public to know um, and, and kind of translating that information into like what what the readers, like only what they need to know. Um, and then I've also, of course, been trying to do some of that to also writing about birds and writing about wildlife. So like I started writing local guides to like, oh, the best bird watching spots in Brookline. Yeah. Uh, things like that. Um, so that's... that's yeah, that's yeah. Interesting. I really resonate with what you said about uh, humor because yeah. humor is so important, especially I feel like most content our generation, like in the Gen Z um, area space with like TikTok and stuff, you got to have a little bit of a humor type undertone for everything. Otherwise, exactly. you lose people's attention. And so yeah. I met some person or it was on TikTok. Uh, there was some person like talking about some super serious topics, some kind of like um, humanitarian stuff. So very wholesome, very like high level. Mo a lot of people, most people wouldn't understand. And then they were just using some like Gen Z humor, like, you know, <laughs> like, or, like, oh, like cap. Um, dead ass I don't know words like that and then I was just like, <laughs> usually you would hear some like 50 year old person at UN giving like high level speech mm -hmm. about this but if you kind of bring it down to like a every everyday entertainment type of level then yeah. it makes us makes it more like um how do I say it give me a word you're the writer conversational exactly exactly <laughs> more conversational, more relatable to like the average person and so that draws them in they're like oh this is not something that's above me it's something that's like oh, some high level big people do this I can also be a part of this I can also talk about birds you know like I could say damn he'd be running in my YouTube channel <laughs> that's the, yeah that's that's the kind of thing that I do when I talk about birds that, that that caught my eye I was just like okay this is this is interesting I really want to ask about this oh wait that actually I didn't even realize you were referring to one of my actual YouTube videos <laughs> Yeah, there's a there's a bird. He he really was running though. He really was. He running. was I running. He was running too, but he was running for real. He really was. I gotta let him know. <laughs> but yeah, so that's a. I feel like that's a very um interesting view on that. Maybe you should start making some uh, TikToks on this. <laughs> you know, I have vaguely considered it, but I have the curse of like trying to be a writer and a journalist and like cater to younger audiences, and mm -hmm. I'm also chronically offline and I like barely touch social media I don't have a TikTok I'm like yeah. afraid I'm just I'm leaving it for now okay. um, but I, I do think if I you know maybe at some point in the future feel more capacity to do that it could work well but for now we're, we're just on YouTube whoever finds me yeah whoever finds me, my most popular video on my bird channel is a video of a squirrel so I have no control over what happens on YouTube it's actual squirrel like video yeah yeah it's it's a, it's probably like the highest quality footage on my channel and on my mm -hmm. by and i realized that there's a larger community of squirrel fans on youtube that i expected because all of these squirrel accounts started commenting on it <laughs> like wow i didn't know y'all were even out here <laughs> <laughs> that's like the craziest way to go viral it is, yeah, and that is the like the very very specific part of the internet that I live in, and I am no one else. Squirrel internet. Yeah, I that's. Gotta, I gotta check it out. I want to be a part of this. It's a good place. Birds and squirrels, new new things that we're getting used to every day. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Okay. Okay. Um. So, some more 
some more questions related to like writing, right? So let's say there's a viewer watching this podcast right now that is kind of like, okay, I'm also in the software space, not software space. It could be anybody, but like I'm doing something right now, but I want to like write. I kind of have this internal knack for trying to express myself better. And uh, it's something that I want to get into. So how would you suggest, um, I know one thing that you mentioned was the creative writing um, course that you took. Um, maybe that will be something that you'd recommend. And is there any other things that you'd recommend to a beginner writer to help them get better, kind of like push them into the right direction? Definitely, yeah. So I can also answer specifically to the software space. I think um, something I really did enjoy doing as a software engineer was writing guides for other engineers um, so it could be like you know any sort of gosh I haven't done this in such a long time so I have to go back in my memory but like any any sort of guide or how to um for like how to run a project or how to like build a test repo or something um really it doesn't matter what it is um but something where you um you're taken out of like the coding headspace and you're thinking more about teaching um, and teaching and like what exactly your leader is in the middle of doing when they decide to open a document. Like, are they trying to run a test? Are they trying to like, um, gosh, I can forget everything. <laughs> Things like, you know, like run a test, like fix a bug, pick mm -hmm. up a new product that they've never looked at before. Um, Still good. Go good. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I still, I, you know, I, I got that degree for something. <laughs> You're doing good. But yeah, I think that's one way to practice it within software, even doing it at work. And I think it's really important, even even just like practicing, like going through and improving your team's documentation. That's another form of writing. It's technical writing, but Ooh, you're yeah. still you're still teaching. You're still kind of moving from one way of thinking, which is like coding and engineering into like language, like English communication, verbal communication, whatever it is. Um, yeah. I think even that practice is really good. Um, and then outside of software, Definitely like writing workshops for me personally were really helpful. Um, just having a supportive, like low, generally like low pressure environment to write creatively. Um, maybe it's, at least for me, it was easier to start with creative writing mm -hmm. than like science writing or anything else. Um, but yeah, the structure of having like a workshop or a class every week, just it just forces you to write regularly and it gets easier and easier like every time you sit down to write and you have a blank page, um, the more you do it, like the less time it'll take for you to start writing. Yeah. Um, so that was really helpful. And then I also think for me, it's been helpful to just talk to other people who are writers. Um, mm -hmm. So I was really lucky. I knew um, one of my friends, their brother is like a professional writer. So I got to talk to him about writing and kind of how he got started. And that, um, then from there, like, he would connect me with someone else and I would talk to them about writing. They would connect me with someone else. So just building your own network, your own community um, to get advice about, you yeah. know, kind of like the advice I'm giving, but everyone has different perspectives. I only yeah. have one um, and that can help. Like, I don't know, it's, it, it builds support, um, gives you a little bit more guidance. Um, and then the last thing I would say is just like, don't be afraid to share your writing with people. Um, mm -hmm. Even if it's just, if you want to start with just a close friend who you really trust, um, even if you wrote something and you think it's really like really cringe or, or weird or too personal or you're oversharing, um, I think at least for me, the more I did that, the more comfortable I got, even yeah. with writing for myself. Um, so yeah, and people can always give you feedback. It's helpful to hear how different people read your writing, what they take away from it. It can be really interesting when you write a piece and you thought that one message was coming through really clearly and then you yeah. show it to five people and everyone had a different takeaway that's all helpful for you developing your skills as well mm, okay this kind of uh this kind of reminds me of like a lot of uh toastmasters have you ever heard of that barely vaguely again chronically offline <laughs> yeah yeah okay so it's just like a it's just like a speaking group where different people come together and then if you're trying to improve your presentation skills um, you come in, you give like a speech, and then the audience kind of critiques you, writes the critiquing points. Wow. And then each week, there's like uh, different sections within Toastmasters where like, oh, like I have this interesting th thing that I want to talk about. 
or there's like impromptu where um, they're like, who wants to come up and talk about this topic for two minutes? And then they just have to go on the fly. Yeah. And drills like that. And then as they kind of are in the club for six months, maybe eight months, one year, they, I, I call it like fitness. So there, you can be fit in different skills, right? So this is kind of like verbal or like speaking fitness where you put in a spot and you're like, all right, go run like 10 miles, but in like the speaking sense. So yeah. you're able to train yourself to get to that point where you just have to talk to like a big group about some technical topic for 15 minutes. You're able to do that on the fly, no problem. So you're able to build that. So I think this kind of is similar to that where you have that community and then they kind of give you some critiques or some like suggestions and then you improve on that and then build that writing skill, like slowly build that muscle and then get to that higher level. Would you say it's similar to that? I think it is similar. Yeah, it really is a muscle. I would emphasize, especially in the beginning, but also indefinitely, like what you write never, it doesn't have to be perfect. You just have to do yeah. it. Um, I think like writing, it's really easy to get very perfectionistic with it. And that will just prevent you from, mm. from putting words down. Um, yeah. So that's one thing. It's just like, it doesn't have to be perfect. And I forgot the other thing that I would recommend probably higher than everything else is like, I found journaling every day to really help me. Cause then that's also like once a day, no matter what, I'm going to write about something. Okay. Um, and that is something that no one else has to see unless you yeah. want them to. Um, so that's also just like, literally just practicing producing words about anything what you're feeling what you did that day um just doing that every day you can mm -hmm. say you, you wrote every day too and that can help with i don't know feeling like you're practicing and building momentum but yeah journal every day <laughs> okay so like how would someone do that just like specifics you'd say take like a journal like this and then just write like um like a page on a certain topic or how would that be yeah, I think a page is a really good start. Um, what I do is I write just what I'm feeling in that exact moment, like whatever emotion I'm feeling, then I expand upon it. Um, okay. Yeah, you could write, you could literally write like, I like I woke up at this time this morning and then I did this and yeah. I ate this and just like detail your entire day. And I think that if you do that regularly, it'll like more will come from it. Um, and maybe more personal expression can come from it with practice. But it also, yeah, it could be any topic. You could be like, I'm going to write about green beans today and just, just yeah, you know, write a page about, I don't know, that actually sounds kind of hard. But yeah, it's just, like, it could be anything. Just and once those are so good. I was munching all day. Yeah, yeah, I see you got it. <laughs> all yeah. day long. Anything. <laughs> okay, okay, that makes sense. I actually, like, it's like a random tangent. It's not part of the script, but um, <laughs> it's uh, the other day. For some reason, I just randomly wanted to like write some rap, mm -hmm. and like I don't know where out of me just like came out, but like it just I was like I need to write some rap right now, um, so I just kind of uh, put on like a beat and then just wrote like the most random, some most random stuff because uh, my friends and I we used to just be in the car and then we play this beat. And then we have to do like two liner like roast raps. So <laughs> it would be so cringe. It's like I'm so rich, I shop at Hugo Boss. Your mom's so broke, she shop at Ross. And then the whole team goes, ah. <laughs> Some goofy stuff like that. But literally, yeah. sometimes you're so creative. Yeah. And you're able to, like, come up with some interesting bars. And then you're just like, yo. And then that whole kind of creative spirit, that energy that develops in that space is, it's like, it's, it's hard to explain that because it's that creativity flow in there. Yep, what's yeah. in here is coming out properly and then other people are able to resonate with it and mm -hmm. ooh, that's mind-blowing yeah yeah I know exactly what you're talking about sometimes you're just like possessed yeah yeah yeah, yeah. it's like uh have you have you heard of the flow state you know what the flow state yeah. is yeah. yes yes it's like that yeah it's like a creative flow state creative flow state true yeah. true yeah so um apart from my little random mm -hmm not rant but sharing about like the rap stuff um this is something that I like to ask a lot of people on my podcast um this is a free zoom meeting just like a aside this is like a free zoom meeting so it kind of might um kick us off at like the yeah. eight minute mark but yeah. if it goes over we can like join back into the meeting so just want to let you know okay so yeah 
back to the question. So this is a question that I ask a lot of uh, the guests on my podcast. And it's basically, what is your big dream for the future? And what steps are you planning to take to get there? Mm -hmm. And no pressure. It doesn't have to be like, give me exactly like your details and stuff like that. What is something that you kind of look forward to? What is something that you dream of? And how do you plan to achieve it? Mm -hmm. Should this be writing related? Could be anything. Anything. Oh my gosh. I got a lot of dreams. It's your um, big dream. Mm. I guess I actually, yeah, I think like I have one of my big dreams is writing related. Um, I am already starting on it, but it's, um, I guess it's, yeah, it's just writing about birds, writing about wildlife professionally, full-time um, in a way where I can see the impact that it's having on readers. Um, so on a large enough scale um, to allow that. Um, and I, I just, I want the impact to be people fe just feeling curious about wildlife. It doesn't have to be them going, oh, like I'm going to um, like I'm going to be the one to like end global warming or I'm going to end deforestation or I'm going to end animal cruelty but just to make them feel really curious about wildlife and maybe empathize with it more yeah. um, feel connected to it that's that's even bigger dream would be for for everyone to like for for me to be able to help people um, develop like a very deep connection with nature and with wildlife that I feel like I have mm -hmm. um like a very personal emotional connection but yeah my dream is for for my writing and also my photography um to to create that on like a large scale yeah really, it's really profound <laughs> appreciate oh, you okay. mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't answer how i how I but it gets there. I'm doing it already. I mean, I, I am starting on a very small scale, right? Starting with like my friends and with like my blog and random people who start subscribing to my blog, which always feels amazing. Yeah. Um, and I'm trying to, you know, single-handedly build, well, not single-handedly. I have great people giving me advice, but build a freelance network for the first time, which mm -hmm. is very different from working as a full-time software engineer, which I'm discovering. It's like a completely different game. Mm -hmm. but yeah starting there maybe trying to start pitching wildlife pieces to like a wider range of publications I'm applying to full-time jobs as a science like for science writing about nature about wildlife um yeah. but if none of those other things pan out I still have my blog and like that's going to continue developing yeah. um like I'm gonna keep talking about birds whether anyone pays me to do it or not um worst case you have the squirrel community I do they always have my back. They always have your back, you know. Very trustworthy group of people. It's true. I'm just kidding. But um, uh, that's that's really that's a really interesting um dream, and the steps that you're taking, I'm sure, are really gonna help you to get there. And I love your like energy and how you're passionate about stuff. And whenever somebody's passionate about anything, it's kind of like draws people in. It's just like. Mm -hmm person's interested in bir about birds i don't know anything about birds but sounds cool so like i'm gonna listen in and also she makes jokes okay that's like a plus on top yeah yeah i'm funny too <laughs> <laughs> so you know um that's great great step and i'm sure with uh, your dedication and everything you'll be able to achieve that one day and with that um i just wanted to say appreciate you coming on the podcast taking the time out of your day and uh sharing with the audience your views yeah of course thank you for having me this was really fun for sure for sure and uh if you want to kind of plug in any of your um like your blog um stuff that people can follow you on you can kind of uh say it or also you can give me like the like a text you're a writer so you know this but uh <laughs> stuff, stuff that i can put in the description so anything if you want to see I can do, I will do both. Yeah. So um, my blog is called Confessions of a Bird Freak. I'm at um, confessionsofabirdfreak.com and also same name on YouTube. 
And I think that's it. That's all I have to plug actually. Yeah, but, but check it out. I, you know, I talk about birds, I make jokes, I put cool pictures in there. It's, it's, it's got everything you ever want. Cool, sounds good. <laughs> The yeah, audience got it right. Definitely watch the squirrel video. That's like a that's a must. Yes. Yeah. A must. It is. <laughs> All right.